The videotaped police beating of a suspect in Philadelphia has been reduced to a litany of numbers. 59 punches and kicks thrown at Thomas Jones. Ten officers hit him, three doing the most damage. 28 seconds for the entire thing. And now one planned lawsuit to be filed against the city by the NAACP. This incident taking place at 22nd and Spruce in the heart of Center City, overlooking the city's best shopping district. He wouldn't have been beaten up like this. Five separate investigations are underway, including one by the FBI. The mayor says there will be no cover-up and no witch hunt. Jones is accused of carjacking and shooting a Philadelphia police officer. The department also says he was involved in at least three robberies in the 30 hours leading up to the car chase that ended with the beating. The judge in the Branch Davidians' wrongful death lawsuit says he may render a final verdict as early as next month. A jury in Waco, Texas, found the government is not to blame for the deaths of 80 Davidians at their compound seven years ago. Federal Judge Walter Smith will now take the jury's findings under advisement. He'll also consider whether federal agents shot at the Davidians at the end of the siege. The jury found the government did not use excessive force and was not negligent by driving tanks onto the compound in the final days of the 51-day standoff. Word tonight that the Reverend Billy Graham has Parkinson's disease. Graham's son Franklin told the Senate hearing that his father had a disorder caused by blockage of fluid in the brain, but doctors at Mayo Clinic say the 81-year-old minister suffers from both problems. They did recently remove fluid buildup. A spokesman for Franklin, Graham, says that he misspoke about his father's condition without first consulting doctors. Where can you find the best hospitals in the country? There's one in Grand Rapids, according to the U.S. News & World Report. Annual hospital ranking... Spectrum Health in Grand Rapids is ranked in the top 50 in four major health specialties. And Butterworth Hospital, now a part of Spectrum Health, is ranked 49th in treating kidney disorders. But experts say these national rankings are just a piece of the pie when it comes to choosing the perfect hospital for you. It really is incumbent upon people to learn and to take the information in the rankings and take that along with other information. Again, the advice of a physician's counsel of family and friends other people who've had experiences and sort of take that in their stock. You can find plenty of help choosing a hospital or doctor online. We've linked a few sites to our website to help you out. Just click on WWMT.com. They were able to operate under their own power, but there was significant damage when two naval ships collided. It happened about 180 miles west of Hawaii last night. Both the USS Denver and the Yukon sustained significant damage. The Denver was scheduled to arrive in Denver late tonight, the Yukon later this weekend. The ships were conducting replenishment operations when they collided. It was supposed to go down off the coast of San Diego tomorrow with thousands of spectators watching. But a former Canadian warship didn't wait for its send-off. The Yukon sank overnight. Authorities say the decommissioned destroyer began taking on water and sank about an hour and a half later. You have to look real closely there, but you can't see it actually going down. Now, three people had to be rescued from the ship. The warship is to become an artificial reef to attract divers Marine life. A dark there it, there, but it happened, but not quite the way they wanted it to. I guess not. No. <laughs> Talk about uh, a quick job hunt. Yeah, let's recap here. The Irish lose a basketball coach and hire a new one, what, all in a week. Before the weekend is out, a coach on a short list of a lot of schools, and you'll hear from him next as he's introduced in South Bend. The Tigers hope to keep the momentum going. We'll tell you what happens tonight. And staying solidly in front at the Tour de France is Lance Armstrong. This week, Notre Dame lost its basketball coach to North Carolina. The job listing doesn't even stay open through the weekend. As tonight, Mike Bray is the new Irish coach. Bray led Delaware to consecutive NCAA tourney bursts after a long stint as a Duke assistant coach. I've only been to South Bend twice before today. Uh, road games when I was with Duke University. Left on the bus through the back exit there and, and drove off this campus many times and you wonder, I God, I wonder if I could ever be good enough to do it at a place like this. And, you know, all I can say is, wow. Michigan basketball fans will face ticket hikes next year. $13 seats will jump to 16 bucks per game and football fans could be charged a $100 seat fee for season tickets. This to help offset a budget deficit caused in part by the end of the Nike contract with the university. Must have been the gum on the helmet tonight that helped out the Houston Astros. Their lucky charm. Watch this. Hideo Nomo. <laughs> and then 
gone. <laughs> He's gonna wind up about five seconds, takes a second for Lance Berkman to hit it out of the park, his 13th of the year. No more in trouble tonight, less than five innings, eight runs, six earned, Tigers lose. Cubs win though, Sammy Sosa hits his 24th, and St. Louis all over the White Sox in the ninth inning. The Battle Cats shut down King County. South Bend over the Whitecaps. Interesting eighth inning tonight. The grounds crew guy at Old Kent Park tripped the wire. The fireworks went off for no reason and lasted for about 60 seconds. The Grand Rapids Griffins are still on the search for a new head coach. Two of the prime candidates are thought to be former Indianapolis ice coach Bruce Cassidy and Claude Julien, a successful junior hockey coach in Quebec. Julian is a hot commodity. He turned down an offer to take over Washington's top farm club last year, and he's currently being courted by several NHL teams anxious for his services. Senior Players Championship continues today in Dearborn. Dave Stockton, look at this shot. He vaults into the hunt with a 66 today, and that includes this eagle. He is seven under for the tournament. Tom Kite, a chance for an eagle. Kite had a lot of opportunities. He would have to tap in for a birdie, and Kite is a 10 under par, along with Hugh Bayaki. Hale Irwin is a couple of strokes back, as is Dana Quigley. That was a quick eagle putt there. <laughs> Some notables, Tom Watson, Bruce Fleischer was 7 under starting the day. He lost six strokes today. Jack Nicholas is 3 over. And a little gratuitous blimp shot for you. Tonight in Milwaukee, Lauren Roberts, the nice birdie putt. That uh, is good enough for him to share the lead with Frank Licklider at 11 under par heading into the weekend. A Granville woman is the winner of the Michigan State Women's Amateur Golf Tournament. Stacy Snyder defeated Mary Jane Anderson five and four at the Metamora Country Club for Snyder. It's her first state title. She had not gone any further than the quarterfinals in three previous tries. Tour de France, Bastille Day in France today, but the 13th stage was won by Jose Vicente Garcia Acosta, just one cyclist. Lance Armstrong keeps his 4-minute, 55-second lead heading into a very tough stage tomorrow. And finally tonight, Frank Licklider shares the lead. Watch this. He's got the birdie putt right here. Oh, it doesn't fall. He's got a tap in, though. If he taps this in, he's got the lead all by himself. No. He two putts from six inches. Oh, my goodness. Watch what he does with the golf club. Many an amateur can, can relate to that. And the sad part about it is he was oh. trying to stay out of his um, playing partner's lie. So he was standing just a little bit off. Uh, but take your time. <laughs> yeah. You... I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Yeah, that's the one shot I can make. <laughs> right. Uh, strange. Thanks, John. Hey, there's something fishy going on in the land of 10,000 lakes. Yeah, in the middle, a sexy stingray embroiled in controversy. Scandal has struck the Underwater Adventures exhibit in Bloomington, Minnesota. Yeah, at the center of this shocking controversy, a stingray stud. The kids visiting the aquarium love it. A new batch of little baby stingrays to watch and pet. But who's behind this population explosion of stingrays? Apparently a ray known only as Little Boy. He's been separated from his nine girlfriends after officials discovered seven new stingray babies in just 12 days. Now Little Boy's been banished to a holding tank for the rest of the year so they can get a hold on the population explosion. That's what happens, you know, when you have nine girlfriends, you are banished, and that's all right. Is that right? You like should be. Stingray doghouse for a while. <laughs> <You know. laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. It's going to be a nice weekend in West Michigan. We have sunshine, just a couple of clouds here and there. In fact, just a couple of clouds overnight tonight. Temperatures tomorrow a little cooler. We're going to be in the upper 70s and then low 80s for Sunday. Our next chance for rain moves in Monday and Tuesday. Just a slight chance late in the day on Monday. And it's going to get a little more hot and a little more humid into the early part of next week. We've had, we've been lucky, you know, I mean, the, what, this timing. whole week, the weekends usually turn out okay. Mm -hmm. We haven't had that big stretch where it's been like in the 90s, you know, for yeah. a week straight here this summer either. We yeah. haven't. We've only had actually one day that's top 90 degrees so far this year. So. No real drought conditions or anything like no. that, so it's been great. Can't yeah. complain. Right. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. We'll see you again on Monday.